Hello, this is Colin Hickey from DMV Software, and this is a quick introduction video to Fast Risk, a software tool for quantitative risk assessment. So, here on the map in Fast Risk, we have a chemical plant containing some population areas and some release cases. And also, here you can see an ignition source along the road. So you typically start your risk analysis by specifying a number of potential losses of containment. So here we have a propane vessel for which we're going to model a catastrophic rupture and a range of leaks of various sizes. If we take a look at the first of these, the propane catastrophic rupture, you can see we have to specify a material and that can either be a pure component or a mixture an inventory by mass or volume and then the storage conditions temperature pressure we can also specify atmospheric pressure or that it's at saturated conditions in which case we specify the temperature and fast risk works out the pressure and vice versa here on the risk tab of this release case we give an event frequency so this is the likelihood per year with which this event can occur you can typically get this number from a historical failure frequency database or through a method such as fault tree analysis. Here on the scenario tab, we have nine different scenario types. This is a catastrophic rupture. If this were a leak, we would have to specify a hole diameter. If it were a line rupture, then here on the pipe tab, we would have to give pipe conditions. But being a catastrophic rupture, we don't need to specify an orifice size or a release direction or anything like that. When material is accidentally released into the environment, its interaction with the atmosphere, with the ground and with the air are important and they will influence how the material behaves. So for that reason we specify weather conditions. Here you can see I have a D 5 meters per second weather which has a wind speed of 5 meters per second and an atmospheric stability class of D which represents neutral conditions. There's also a number of background parameters such as the air temperature, relative humidity and the radiation flux received from the sun. The probability that the wind is blowing from any direction is specified here by double clicking the folder. Here you can see we've got 16 weather directions and then for these angular segments the fraction with which this direction and the three different weather conditions are experienced are specified. We can look at the consequence results resulting from these inputs. If we take a look at the propane catastrophic rupture and view its graphs, you can see that we're offered three sets of results because the interaction of the release and the resulting cloud or pool with the atmosphere have been, have been calculated for all three different conditions. If I choose D 5 meters per second, the discharge atmospheric expansion and dispersion modeling in fast risk will work out how the cloud expands, if there's any liquid fraction, if that liquid fraction rains out onto the ground, how the pool behaves, if it does so, things like this. So we'll look at the side view dispersion graph and run the dynamic display you see we get a little controller. If you keep your eye on the time here, I'll run back to zero. And then by clicking the play button, you can see the cloud expand and then drift off, reducing in concentration and size as it drifts off downwind to some concentration of interest. In this case, the half lower flammable limit concentration of propane. In addition to the discharge and dispersion results, there's also the subsequent effect results. In this case we have immediate ignition resulting in a fireball. Here's the radiation versus downwind distance effects from the fireball. And also the footprint, the potential hazard zone resulting from flash fires. Here showing the flash fire of LFL and half LFL concentrations. All of the effect zones from all of the release cases and all of the event tree processing that's used to work out the potential outcomes are combined with risk information including delayed ignition sources and optionally population. Population can be used if you're looking for measures of societal risk. 
switching back to the map we can take a look at some of these ignition sources so at the moment we're looking at a day run row which I'll come back to if I expand the day ignition set here we have main road day if I just right click and pinpoint that item on the map you can see it becomes centered on the map the main road day is this red transportation route running past the plant and through the town so it's a very simple study with a minimum number of inputs for clarity if we take a look at the main road day ignition source the required inputs are an ignition probability in a time period so a flammable cloud would have to interact for 10 seconds to experience an ignition probability of 0 0.2 and this is further multiplied by a presence factor so the presence factor for a simple piece of operating equipment could just be a straight number but for the purposes of transportation routes there's an extra function built in whereby we can provide a traffic density and an average speed and then the presence factor of ignition sources along the line will be calculated for us by fast risk. Now taking a look at population you can see that there are four populations the East South Point population if I just pinpoint that on the map you can see it's here to the east of this town called South Point I double click East South Point you can see that it's been given the category of town which means that on the map it appears with vertical red hatching there are 10,000 people in the town and they have a 60% or a 0.6 fraction indoor probability there are lots of parameters sitting in the background here which will now be involved in the calculations such as eventual probabilities for immediate and delayed ignition and the probabilistic split between different outcomes such as flash fires, explosions, things like that there's also vulnerabilities associated to how certain hazards impact people indoors and outdoors they'll all be used as the calculations are performed and we receive the risk result we can view the risk results here on the run rows tab so a run row is a configuration of how you would like the study to run so given that the weather conditions are of a certain type during the day and that the distribution of population and also ignition is different during the day based on traffic density or people being at work or at home there's certain reasons for splitting the calculations out into distinct calculation runs and these can then be later combined together to represent the annual risk the two main outputs of risk results begin with individual risk and we view those by looking at the risk contours the location specific individual risk is displayed here over a map if I zoom in you can see that our study consisted of if I look at the models a catastrophic rupture some leaks and also this root model so this is rather than being fixed equipment a uh, number of scenarios along a route such as a railway line a road a pipeline and these potential releases are distributed along a route the resulting hazard zones from all of these potential accidents are combined together and their risks presented so here we have a one in a thousand risk contour that's represented here by this red line so standing here for one year gives you a one in a thousand statistical probability of fatality seeing the overall risk result is the first part of, of the process of risk management and in this study a number of risk ranking points have been specified at locations of interest for example a control room at the nearest point to each of the main population areas you can see them here in the risk ranking point folder so using the run row tab I can 
view, for example, the individual risk ranking report. And if I sort by frequency per year, I can generate a report which gives me a breakdown of the contributions of risk at that particular location. Scrolling down, you can see the individual risk ranking point called control room, which has this location, 100% of the risk comes from the propane catastrophic rupture. The risk ranking points are a useful tool for seeing in which release cases the risks lie from your activities and it helps you prioritize your activities for risk reduction measures. Closing the individual risk ranking report and coming back to the run rows tab I can generate the FN curve. This is a societal risk result showing the frequency with which different numbers of fatalities can be expected to be experienced from our activities. The criteria lines represent tolerable in into and intolerable regions. A risk ranking report for societal risk is also available. In the view menu, if I choose societal risk ranking report, I can see for each of the release cases, the catastrophic rupture, vehicle rupture at different locations along the route, things like this, what the contribution to the number of fatalities was. And all of this, in a nutshell, represents the basic inputs and the work process required by Fast Risk for conducting a QRA. And all of this is supported by online help, tutorials, uh, global help desk, and a wide range of training courses.